media, as I say, it's a media is also like a watchdog. You know, you you're perpetually watching what's what's happening. What's is there something wrong? Is there something wrong? Why, you know, why it's wrong? So you're watching all these things. So you're like a watchdog, and that's actually. I've been taught, I've been told, I believe that should be the role of the media. Watchdog, not a lab dog. Okay. So media also, you know, through media, media also full, uh, shapes, molds rather the public op opinion. If the media, majority of the media, newspapers, te television, social media, they gang up and say this particular rock, it's not a rock, it's gold. Then you know, public op opinion is swayed. They start believing, okay, it's a gold. Like when we gang up and call a particular person is Papu. So people start believing, oh, he's Papu. Or a particular person is a person. When he came, when he took the reign of the country, the best thing which might, might have happened to this country. So he's a monk, he's God, he's saint. So we start believing, okay, this person, that person is Papu, but that person is saint. So it's a media has a tremendous power, you know, wielding public opinion, shapes the opinion, shapes the opinion of the nation. So that is the power of the media, you know. So that's what I'm saying. A free and objective media is very essential. It's very, uh, it's needed for a healthy democracy. Now, some of you will join journalism. Some of you will become a reporter. I mean, you'll start as a reporter. So I would say, what is the job of a reporter? The first thing we were told, we were trained, the job of a reporter is to be objective. As I said, again, I'm repeating again, not to be biased. The job of a reporter, I mean, it might be very radical when I say this, should be always anti-establishment. You should not look at the establishment I mean, you should look at this establishment as a critic. Point out what exactly this is. Uh, what are the policies? Are the policies good for the nation? Is this particular policy good for the country? Is that policy good for a particular community? Or is a particular policy creating division in the community? So that's where your role come as a watchdog. You know, so when you write a story, as a reporter, where you were told. So when you write a story, you write a story in a very objective manner. You don't give your opinion. Say, for example, you're reporting riots. So we say this riot started like this between two communities. We generally don't name communities between these two communities. And we leave it at that. We don't say this community is at fault. This community is, uh, you know, is, it's, a, it's not at fault. We don't say that. We just leave it at that. And if you want to give your opinion, there are pages in a newspaper called op-ed pages, opinion pages, where you know editorials are there. You write your columns, you give your opinions. So there you, there, there you can say what you think is right, what you think is wrong, and it's up to the reader to agree or disagree with you. You know, like, I would say to change the world, as someone said, you know, like uh, journalism is a short term weapon. You know, you wield it very carefully, very cautiously, very prudently. You know, just so I would say rather the journalists, as a journalist, we are also historians in a way. Journalism is a history on the run. You reported about demolition of Babri Masjid. You reported uh, the freedom movement. You reported Gujarat ma massacre. You reported a whole lot of things. So you have recorded history in a way. So that is, I think, basically is the role of a journalist, of a reporter. So now initially, traditionally, it was newspaper, radio, and then came television, and now, of course, social media. Media is, so media is everywhere. Media is into your bathroom, media is into your bedroom. So now 
media is on your phone i mean you don't i mean media is everywhere you know like i would say as a journalist as a i mean i started as a print journalist i was doing television also so i would rather say that you know the reading habits have gone down for a journalist let me say for being a journalist what is essential is reading people like i would say even the gen younger generation they hardly news read newspapers the most of your news or whatever gathering comes through your internet social media rather let me put it like that whatsapp facebook fun, uh, i mean all this so particular social media stuff so things have changed things have evolved for better or for worse i mean it will only time will only say now let me come to the main subject of censorship now as i said you know media is very essential for the democracy so if the media is not free if the media is not allowed to point out the flaws in the policies it's like someone stifling you your voice you know choking you you can't shout you can't say you know this is wrong so it's like that so you let's come to nazi germany so what was media during the nazi time fascist regimes let's call it fascist regimes they started closing down newspapers which were anti nazi they started controlling news they banned books articles which were anti government or anti hitler <clears throat> so our first brush india's first brush with uh, censorship in a way was in 1975 during emergency newspapers were closed down journals were arrested i mean only two newspapers that time i mean you we weren't born then so only two newspapers indian, indian express and statesman only two newspapers stood out they carried on their op uh, op-ed pages they carried blank uh, blank pages you know in protest against the censorship while other all the major newspapers they told the government line with their tails between their legs so the only two newspapers day in and day out they carried blank pages on their you know on their this thing what do you call that uh, op-ed pages so censorship and during emergency i mean during emergency what was the role of the uh, journalist a press release will come because you can't investigate do any investigative journalism you just write the press release x y z is good the government is doing this the government is doing that so this is that was you know kind of uh, censorship we saw uh, we experienced for the first time in india i was in school that time so and the question is has journalism ever been free in india let me tell you something as a journalist since the day i started my career to be honest we have we are always given a brief these are the holy cows we say in a particular organization in any organization you go you cannot write against them you can attack their minions but you cannot attack a particular particular leaders who control who actually remain in power at the, who were in power during that particular period so it's always there so it's very difficult to say the media is always been free <laughs> the media has always been fair that's and as a reporter earlier i believe even before i joined journalism used to be a mission now actually it's a profession so there are times reporters or journalists uh, become like a tailor 
गिव देम कि ये शर्ट इस साइज का बनना है तो यू जस्ट यू नो कट अकॉर्डिंगली और मेक द पीस अकॉर्डिंगली सो देन द क्वेश्चन बट देन एज वी सॉ ड्यूरिंग द इमरजेंसी देर वॉज द सेंसरशिप वॉज ऑफिशियल इन अ वे like in all dictatorial regime the censorship is of a uh, kind of official so i mean before i i'll have to uh, give you uh, certain things so how do you gag the media now you say you gag the media because you say you invoke certain uh, ipcs in uh, in different sections and say that you know your article is against the state your particular article is hurting religious sentiments your particular article is creating enmity between communities i mean there are various ways to you know silence a journalist so these were used during the time of emergency during uh the time of emergency and it became of course after emergency things changed for better and there was a lot of freedom and people started writing even during in uh, before uh, 2014 you see we <clears throat> there were uh, newspapers were reporting scams after scam you know this scam that scam and it was a scam a day so people were writing against the government people were writing we were writing absolutely we were we had writing absolutely with complete impunity let me say that way so now there's no emergency now i'm not saying it. see how do you gag a media when they're in a democracy there is subtle ways of gagging the media you know in a democracy as i said suddenly the pressures are put on the owners the proprietors to stop giving the government ads to the newspapers and the newspapers let me tell you don't run on subscriptions the main revenue comes from advertisements so the government advertisements to for a lot of newspaper um you know bring a lot, majority chunk of the revenue so you stop giving ads then the agencies investigative agencies are set forth against the owners and when you like bansilal had said about indira gandhi and sanjay gandhi so bansilal was a chief minister of haryana once upon a time he said so say some said uh, uh why don't you uh, you are close to indira gandhi but why don't you uh, you know uh, suck up to Sa- sanjay gandhi he said when i have the calf why should i bother with the cow so when the government has a cow we journalists are basically calves so when they start gagging their proprietor the proprietor puts pressure on you i'll tell you give you an example sometime back uh in a newspaper the chairman of a particular newspaper called one of his reporter on what one of his top editorial guy and he said uh, what have you written the government had stopped the dvp ads so he said nothing not, not at all we haven't written anything so he said fix up in that time uh, a meeting with the and the minister and minister looks after the information broadcasting so appointment was fixed the chairman and the reporter went met the minister the minister said are boss aap log kya likh rahe hai so they said we have written against you anything against your government they said no no you have written you have written anything against my government our government but you know you're giving a lot of publicity to the opposition stop giving publicity to the opposition so you know then suddenly the instructions come it stop giving writing about uh, the opposition parties i mean give them a wee little bit space the 
more uh, i mean the, the, uh, the focus should be on the government and what the what how the government is doing and you know everything the government uh, everything about the government so that is one way and secondly and second way and the other way is to arrest the journalists a lot of journalists you see have been arrested and the worst scenario was the killing of gauri lankesh if you all remember she was assassinated in bangalore in 2017 if i'm not wrong so what i'm trying to say is that see this is how the inner democracy there's no official there's nothing official that you know this uh that you cannot write this news you cannot do this thing you cannot you know write against us there's nothing official but there's a it's like big brother watching you if you people have read 1984 george orwell's 1984 it's like big brother big brother is perpetually watching you so it's basically like that you know it's you perpetually under observation now recently i don't know whether you people have read uh, this uh, the government uh, the group of ministers the government of india has formed a group of ministers which will regulate or uh, the not regulate in the same monitor the social media now they are identifying 50 positive the, the who are you know giving negative stories about the government who are giving positive stories about the government so <clears throat> 50 such 50 journalists or 50 you know medias or social media handles have been were are supposed to be identified and they are supposed to be quote and quote neutralized so you neutralize them and in this unfortunately in this particular exercise this news had come out you some of us uh, some of the journalists were involved they started guiding or are uh, telling the government ki these are the you know these are the journalists these are the people who who are writing against you who are you know who are anti government so this is a recent phenomenon this gom neutralize the word neutralize becomes very harmful for a journalist because at that time you cannot actually what do you mean by neutralize that means you can't write anything so it's better why be journalist then. i mean i we used to do a whole lot of investigative stories now we can do in the now how many investigative stories are coming out see that is actually the problem and then you see the pressure from other side now let me t- tell you this uh, particular ad i was t- um, when i was you know doing some research and you must have this roll back of tanishk ad if you remember this tanishk ad actually was about ekatvam it showed a muslim mother in law preparing for a baby shower in hindu uh, in a hindu custom because the son in law so mother in law daughter was muslim and son i think was hindu so ekatvam the sanskrit word means oneness in quality problem was that it showed interreligious marriage now the moment you showed interreligious marriage you're questioning the government policy in some state government's policy of love jihad so you're telling me as one of the speakers had rightly pointed out who to marry who not to marry not only that i mean there there are times we have been told what to eat and not to what not to eat you know this is good for us or this is against our particular hindu custom to eat this particular food and so you can be arrested now for you know violating that so what happened the tanishka ad was boycotted and the ad had to be taken off so there are a lot of articles then again there was a particular article in a newspaper called dna which questioned the government policies the article was taken off there are a lot of 
this kind of you know pressure uh, keeps uh, then again uh, let me uh, i mean i'm mean just uh, this arrest of this girl what was um, uh, disha uh, disha ravi so what she did she used a so called toolkit to voice the farmers protest on social media so she was arrested what why was she arrested because they said the toolkit was being used or prepared by the pro khalistani forces she was arrested and she was eventually she eventually got bail and all that so what happens as i said in a democracy when you start clamping down on the media when you start stifling the voices what do how do you use it? besides using law you brand it you become branded you become anti national you become pro pakistani you become a chinese stooge and you become an urban naxal so and you see the problem here is that when you're being singled out the tragedy is there's no one coming to your protection not even the media today nobody is there so what beka what happen what's happening or what happens if you are an, if you're an objective journalist you are a journalist who has no bias you become in minority so what is happening you see like i say i'll come to the social media a wee bit later television came into being television is a very powerful media more powerful than newspaper because television has a massive penetration you see the visuals and you know people are swayed more by the pictures than by so pictures than by stories so what is happening now in the television journalism i've been a television journalist I I was posted in Kashmir. I was reported from Kashmir, but that time things were different. Now, then, so what has happened is now what about the anchors? So media, news, television news is no more about a reporter telling you the story. Look at the BBC reportage, for instance. A reporter reports. Come back to Indian television. Is it? anchors were telling you what is right what is wrong the anchors have become loud it's a cacophony i mean there are times the panelists are not allowed to speak it's be- it's become crass it's become gross it's become absolutely it's a one sided co- it's a monologue they tell you the anchors tell you this is good i mean i uh, i i was watching uh, i was flipping through the channels so one of the channels suddenly said that the increase in the fuel prices which is exorbitant now is for the good of the nation well i'm sure it's for the good of the nation but it's not it's hurting me at this juncture so you know you see these things for example then look at the bihar elections were coming right so what was the news before the bihar elections which was dominating all the indian channels hindi and some of the english channels sushant rajput if you remember correctly what happened sushant rajput was assassinated and anchors came out with fantastic stories and how this uh, his girlfriend riya if i'm not wrong how she was you know supplying drugs and now the ncb has again filed a report and all that stuff so it was a build up to the bihar elections it was a bihari so you know but what it was because someone one panelist because that time the gdp crashed so one panelist asked ki can we why are we talking about sushant rajput why aren't you talking about the economy of the country of the gdp to so the anchor uh, immediately shouted back and retorted and said that if you want to talk about gdp go to another channel we are here to talk about sushant rajput how important sushant rajput rajput is for the it's for the uh, uh, is it's for the nation i mean how important is he when there are no jobs when the economy is going down 
when the GDP is crashing, we are talking about Sushant Rajput, the ch prime time channel, TV channels are talking only about Sushant Rajput. But then that's how it is. So what has happened? The TV, majority of the TV, you see, journalists or the TV anchors, as I said, they are not watchdogs anymore. They have become, you know, the voice of the government, the voice of the ruling, whatever. It's they from watchdog, they have turned into lap dogs, as they say. I mean, I'm a bit harsh on this thing, but it really hurts me to see the deterioration of the quality of the journalism at this juncture. So, you know, <clears throat> like, so this is, these are the various ways. I mean, the moment you say which is not in line with what the particular government is saying or the policy is, then it's again, then the pressure is brought upon you on various, these are these ways, you know. So it's really very difficult uh, for a for a particular uh, unbiased journalist, a journalist who wants to remain true to his profession, to, you know, report in a objective manner. So then let's come to the social media. As I said, the GM has been formed to, you know, neutralize the social media. So why social media has become more important than the print media or the television. Now, social media is everywhere. You know, the quarter of the world's population is on Facebook. The humongous population uh, is on WhatsApp and so on and so forth, and Instagram and uh, Twitter. So this has become, and there's a huge army by being used by you know, the politicians or the ruling other parties to monitor and control the social media. See, for example, Twitter. The moment, see what has happened to Twitter. Twitter is being controlled by a lynch mob, as we say. I mean, they're violent abuses. They are death threats. If you write anything against a particular, they are trolling, massive amount of trolling. So these things, Twitter is, is a very dangerous, become a very dangerous place. Facebook, for example. Now the Facebook, again, you see the pro and anti, you know, opinions are both in, are there in Facebook. But Facebook, uh, Facebook again, if you, if you say anti-government, See, because the allegorics and all that, Facebook give, uh, gives you only that, uh, shows you that uh, side of the picture. So whatever you are interested in, Facebook shows you that. So another thing, you uh, then you come to WhatsApp. So what is happening? This WhatsApp has become a, another very potent tool. It's fake news. You know, the, what has happened? Like, there are a lot of, I mean, there was, I was just going through uh, then some once, uh, suddenly once, you know, there's a clip started circulating that a minor girl was being molested in, inside a madrasa. So that became really viral. So then there's a site called Alt News, A-L-T, Alt News. So they do, did a particular research and they found out that particular clip or the particular, what do you say that, uh, shot which were, which had gone viral was actually a shot from a Bangladesh, some short film. You know, the fake news has become so dangerous and you don't, and people are, you know, people, uh, things that have, people are, uh, violences that the people are getting 
completely swayed by this uh, kind of news. So the fake news, and it's very easy to get, uh, and because of social media, the social media is so powerful because it's very easy to make a particular thing viral. Say, for instance, you send something to a particular friend. He immediately, and if it suits his uh, kind of outlook or you know, particular way of thinking, he immediately sure, passes, it, uh, passes it on to you know, his group of friends and then gradually it gets viral. So, you know, so now what is that? So the, gov so the social media has become a major, major tool for any ruling or any political party to sway public opinion. And that is why whenever there are negative stories in a social media, for, for instance, uh, I will name names here. Sometime back, the ratings of a very powerful leader of this country went down in social media because of a particular thing he said on his, you know, regular speeches. The, so then the government, see, after that, they started, they began this exercise of how to control and regulate social media. So now this girl, GUM, has been formed. So they are identifying, they are in the process of identifying uh, this positive uh, influences and the negative influences. So now what is going to ha happen? They're going to set some guidelines. So you set guidelines accordingly and you kind of clip their wings. Then another way of suppressing dissent or freedom of speech. Now let's come to the, I mean, censorship is basically curbing of freedom of speech or freedom of expression. Again, we see, we saw, it started actually during the time of Indira Gandhi. If you people remember, if you, some of you had heard of a movie called Andhi, uh, Sanjeev Kumar and uh, Suchitra Sen. So Andhi was banned because it kind of, you know, talked, of, uh, talked about Indira Gandhi a wee bit. The, during in, Indira Gandhi's regime, Andhi was banned. Then there was a film again showing the Congress, uh, the, how the Congress, Sanjay Gandhi and all that, Sanjay, how Sanjay Gandhi was, you know, manipulating the party and uh, called Kissa Kursika. Kissa Kursika. That was again banned. The film was confiscated. <clears throat> then you come. It's not only you know the politicians. Then the problem here is also about religion. If you remember Salman Rushdie's sat satanic verses, it was banned. Then Wendy John Donagier's, uh, I think, uh, that on Hinduism, that book was banned. Then you know the, then the movies you come the fire because it showed lesbianism. It ran into massive controversy and all that. It almost, you know, it upset the whole lot of elements. Then, uh, then another book called Understanding Islam through Hadith by, I think, Ram Swarupya, by Ram Swarupya. That was banned again because the Muslim clerics, Muslim clergy went, uh, I mean, were against it. Fire, as I said, Padmavat, you all know how it ran into the controversy and all that. So, so these are the various ways of, you know, like, uh, like trying to silence you or silence the freedom of expression. And the problem is that the moment the censorship come into, or rather invisible censorship, let me tell you, come to force, then it's very unhealthy for, you know, like, a democracy because you don't know what exactly is happening you are actually in dark absolutely then you see what happened the problem again we are facing in this country is that let me go back to germany nazi germany it's not the problem is not that the actual problem was not that hitler killed millions of Jews. The problem was, the core of the problem was the 
ordinary Germans supported Hitler in killing those Jews. Even when Hitler was losing the war, the ordinary German were support, were, they, they were supporting him. Problem lies there, you know. I have covered a lot of elections. I mean, every time there's an election, we talk of economy, we talk of jobs, we talk of, you know, how to take the, um, how to develop the country economically. Economy remain, becomes the main slogan of, or the main mantra of every election. Starting from Garibi Hatta's slogan to, of Indira Gandhi to whatever, to uh, uh, India shining a watch by and all that stuff. In 2019, this was the first election I saw. In fact, I wrote also, where economy was not discussed. Economy was not an issue at all. What was the issue? What were the issues? Pulwama, Pakistan, Muslim. The goalpost of Indian electoral policy, policy has shifted. They got a brute majority. So my fear as a journalist, as a journalist, I always say, you know, you have to rise above all these sectarian views. For me, no one is God. For me, no one is great. For me, you're as good, you're good only when you do something good for the nation. I don't care whether you're Hindu, whether you're Muslim or you're Christian. I care only if you're a good human being and you are doing something for the nation. That's where I think the role of journalist that, that should, should be the role of a journalist. I mean, there, of course, a lot of people might not agree with me this. I mean, my problem is that, of course, religion is important. Nobody is saying religion is not important. But I think a hospital or an academic institution is more important than a temple. Absolutely, sir. Uh, and I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but we're at a loss of time right now. And we have an absolute a flood of questions for you, right? So uh, one of the questions that actually I wanted to ask you uh, in lines with what you're saying, right? So uh, what, your, uh, what your speech, uh, sorry, what you were trying to say was essentially that there is a decline of journalistic freedom in India, right? And this has been backed up in, in, in essence by many international groups. So, uh, uh, you know, when, when the common man sees this, the common man also wants a sort of an unbiased media, right? You know what? Uh, once the US third president, uh, Thomas Jefferson, had said, I was reading, he said, the man who reads nothing, the man who reads nothing is better educated than the man who reads a newspaper. I hope it, I hope we don't see that day. You know? anyway, this reminds me, Absolutely. this reminds me of what I read somewhere that new, uh, news is the new entertainment. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, so the thousands of channels, you know, they are showing uh, fake like news. Anchor suddenly, I uh, I remember the anchor comes wearing a green sari, and she says, "Dekhiye, ye sari wheat ka color ka hai," because Ria was using wheat. How? I mean, come on, this is news. This is serious journalism. What are you doing? Yes, sir. So I exactly. wonder, do they ever break a story for any public good? I mean, this is. This is uh, breaking news. This has become... Uh, yeah, breaking news. See, I yeah. we see the problem here, uh, Dr. Devedi, is we were told investigative journalism is what? When you investigate a, when you investigate a ruling party. Are, why should I investigate Rahul Gandhi? He's not even a prime minister. He's not even... He's nothing. He has no contribution to... My, he has no contribution to my well-being. I'm not going to inter... I mean... Anyway, that's a different story altogether. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted. But I would say that you know there are the content of uh, there are a number of forces responsible for this decline or loss of conscience or uh, degrading in. You know, I'm going to lose my job after that. and the values. Problem, uh, I said I'm going to lose my job after that. Anyway, the problem here is, as I said, you know, you see, have you seen you uh, have you seen a movie called uh, um, 
Uh, I mean, there was a movie called uh, All the Presents Men. I mean, you should see that. They break this Watergate scandal. How a newspaper, the organized, see, a reporter can't do anything. I can get, you're the, you're, say, you're the, tomorrow you're a proprietor of, and I work under you. I, get, I said, uh, Dr. Divedi is a story which will, you know, which will absolutely, which is, it's a, corrupt, it's a story of corruption against the government. So I can get you the story, but whether that story will ever see the light of the day or not is up to you. You said, no, you can't write the story. So that's why you say how the Washington Post went, supported the journalists and all that in breaking such stories, you know. So my problem is not with the journalists. We get salaries. But if you don't allow, stand by me, where do we go? Yeah. It happens to the human rights. I mean, everyone is uh, trying to save one's livelihood, one's skin. But of course, what you have EMIs to pay. You have, uh, you know, car EMI hai apka, uh, You know, you have got. You are surrounded by loans. So what, what? What do you do? You quit and quit and do what? You know, it's a tragedy. Like maybe there's a like. Ye safar bahut hai kathin magar naudaso mere ham safar. Maybe there'll be a light at the end of the tunnel. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, sorry. You what will be your uh, straight up advice to the young generation if they want to survive in this profession? Like some hacks or you can say survival hacks. No, my only thing is to just try to be true to yourself. I'm sure there, there are organizations which are, which are objective, which are unbiased. Look for them and just try to be true to yourself. See, it has to change. Indira Gandhi couldn't weld her, ba 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 uh, you know, uh, flex her muscles after some time. Emergency had to end. So that's what I'm saying. There, these someday this will end. It has to. Maybe not in my lifetime, but someday, your you people will see that change. Maybe. Um, sir, a follow-up of that. Do you think censorship in media basically discourages the youth, the young generation who want to be, you know, who are like aspirants no, who want to be? I gave you a very bleak picture. I think I shouldn't have. There's also a good side of the media also. So, again, if you become a journalist, I, that's what I'm saying. There are, uh, there are organizations. I mean, if you really go through maybe one-on-one, -on -one, I can tell you the organization, not in a public forum, which are good, which are doing a really good, real good journalism. And they're long form of journalism, you know. Thing. Say, for instance, I'll give you a very, uh, my partner was telling me, she was saying, okay, have you really seen that Mamta was assaulted yesterday? See, Bengal elections are like major key for the ruling party. You win Bengal, you might come back to power in 2029. No, 2029, yeah. 2024. I mean, you are here till 2029, I'd say. Mamta was assaulted yesterday. So what is the what was the uh, headline in Times of India? Mamta injured. Hmm. Says she was assaulted. You see the what should have been there? Mamta attacked, assaulted, so on. Mamta is injured. You see the twist in the, in the subtle. So, you know, these are very dangerous things. And it's not healthy for any democracy. Freedom of speech, kaha hai? Can you say what you and me may be discussing private on, in, in a public forum? Absolutely, sir. Uh... And I mean, American media grilled. Uh, Trump day in and day out. Trump had press conferences almost every day. When was the last press conference by a leader? One in ten, almost ten years is going to be. Nothing. It's a monologue. Democracy is not about monologue. Democracy is about discussion, debates. Democracy is about pluralism. You know, that's what a journalist should be. 
Yeah. Absolutely, sir. Uh, so we, we also have uh, some questions from the audience themselves. So uh, Sarthak uh, Sharma asks here that uh, social media helps us create a discourse or even a conversation at a large scale where everyone gets a voice, right? Which can be both beneficial and problematic. So, but how do you ensure that discourse at a point at which social media activism stops? Right, no, so. I mean, um, your question is complete or you have? Been? Yeah, 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 absolutely. See, social media activism is not bad. Social media discourse is not bad. I might, I, you, I might say this particular, you know, card is wrong. This particular policy is wrong. You will say, no, this is not wrong. So we have a debate. We have a healthy debate. But the moment the government says you know, that I am saying this policy is wrong, I cannot say that. Hmm. My problem is there. You cannot neutralize me. You should not try to neutralize me. There has to be a debate. Why not? Why shouldn't there be a debate? I might Absolutely. like something, you might dislike something. We should have a debate. Why not? That doesn't mean my debate is anti-national and your debate is pro um, you're, you're, you're a patriot because of your debate and I'm anti-national. That can't be the, you know, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the next question is from Hera. She asked, Sir, during the farmer's protest, I read an article in the Hindu, which talked about that we have seen a rise in small media houses and freelancers in recent time. But during the farmer's protest, a case was filed against 11 senior journalists. And these freelancers and small media houses were not allowed to report and were arrested. After reading it, I felt that this is the decline of those of these independent media houses. So am I wrong or is it really the decline? See, as I said, I mean, small media houses, when you say small media houses, how do you, how does a media house survive? Forget a small business. Say, uh, let me, let me give you an example of a uh, local grocery shop and you know, the big supermarkets. So the moment, and it's very easy to clamp down on this local retailers, you know, chota motor retailers. So small newspapers are like that. You run a media house, which is not powerful economically, financially. It's very easy to clamp it down. You just pick up the owner, IT rates karado. Yes, it is a decline of. I mean, to answer her question, it is a decline. I have seen, I mean, I'm I'm not, let me say, I don't know whatever happens. There's a steady decline of journalism in this country. I mean, even I have covered, I used to cover BJP. I covered BJP I mean, during Vajpayee's regime and all that. I was like a reporter on the field. And now I don't go to the field so much. I was writing left and right against the government. And today, some of the BJP guys are very close friends of mine. They didn't have a problem. It was healthy. They said, Tera kaam hai, likhna tu likhega. Even now, some one of my very uh, minister is a very close friend of mine. He said, Yar, tu, tu, it's like that, but he's a good friend. So that's healthy. My thing is that discussion and debate has to be there without a discussion or debate or, you know, opposing views or democracy can't exist. Uh, yeah, so uh, adding on to that, there's another question. Uh, so uh, this is from Akshita Singh. So she asks, uh, sir, do you believe the credibility of media is now uh, on a dwindling position? As now we have like uh, come across terms like Godi media or rightist, leftist, and you know, they're terming each and every newspaper as some sort of having some sort of a bias. So is media as a whole uh, losing its credibility in some sense in, in respect to that debate that you're talking about? Yeah, of course it is losing a lot of credibility. It is. I'm being a journalist, I'm saying that. It has lost a lot of its credibility. Media is not uh, unbiased anymore. It's not objective anymore. Either we are in this camp or that camp. Say a friend of mine, she was uh, working with this uh, uh, particular, very uh, 
popular channel, but anti-government channel. And she was covering uh, 2019 uh, Lok Sabha elections in Bengal. She wrote a story that left front, the CPM, the left votes, Marxist votes were being transferred to the BJP before the results came out. She was hounded out by the Marxists. She was like hounded out by, I mean, she was like, uh, I mean, she was the, her owners, the proprietors of the particular uh, website questioned her, how can you write that? You know, there's a lot of major, the left uh, MPs and MLA started writing letters to the editors and since it was a pro-left channel. And she was like, kind of, I won't say victimized, but she was kind of harassed. But when the results came out, what happened? CPM got two, uh, 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 sorry, BGP got 18 seats, one eight, and it's a huge thing. The uh, vote percentage went up to 40%. So she was kind of vind uh, vindicated and then everyone went quiet. So it's not only, you can't only blame that BJP karta hai, but Congress bhi karta hai, left bhi karta hai. But even then, even in that, but see, I was, I was in Calcutta, I was in Telegraph. All my life, we, all my Telegraph journalism, I, we wrote against the left front regime. I'm not a leftist, I'm anti-establishment. Let, let me be very clear. But we left attacked us, left like harassed the, uh, us. But we kept on writing. But the proprietors never told me, Ki, bhai, uh, don't write this. But things have changed. That's what I'm saying. Now, the proprietor tells you, Ki mat likho. So, mat likho. Um Yeah, sir, in context of what you said in the beginning, there's this question from Puneet Patel. Do you think that television media and social media has ruined the efforts of print media, which was trying to focus on real issues of today? Context, because people are more connected to pictures, as you mentioned exactly. in the speech. And these media channels know that the real issues are not going to keep people, you know, glued to their context. Yeah, exactly. See, the, that's what I said. No? The uh, pictures are more powerful than the stories, than written words. So... That's what has happened. I, I mean, remember the World Cup last time when we lost in semi-final? We lost in semi-final too. What was the Aztec news? Modi Laiga World Cup. Seriously? You, you're joking? That was the news. Kya Modi ji jita, 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 World Cup liye. discussion ho gaya. India lost. I mean, whatever. Unfortunately. Agar jit jata, uh, we can even, even talk about how recently Narendra Modi Stadium uh, was renamed, right? So uh, uh, some yeah. people were saying that that was because of, uh, you know, uh, our, our Prime Minister's uh, so, sort of a grace of his that, that helped India win that match. <laughs> I know, yeah. And I, I mean, someone told me as a, because India, so I just, I joke, I was a, Joking, some I, I just uh, we were sitting, some a friend of mine. I said, "Yeah, India jeet jayega." I said, "Jeet na padega." Salaam, Narendra Modi in series me harega kaise? India won, of course. India won because of its merit and all that. But you know, we were joking. Absolutely. But whatever, you know, India won. Yeah. <laughs> so another question from the audience, sir. Uh, so are you saying us here? This is a sort of I, I believe one of the better questions that we have received. So he asked, sir, isn't the kind of journalism that we are seeing today? Is it a retaliation of the legacy of the equivalent biased media from the previous decades? So, uh, can we can I, 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 I'm sorry, come again? Yeah, uh, basically yeah, he's I asking, mean, can we blame? Can we sort of uh, blame the previous biases of the media uh, for the kind of journalism that we are seeing today? Right. So, so the sort of the rage the journalism that we're seeing. Can you ask the question? Now, what were the previous biases? When you uh, say previous biases. So which era you're talking about? What bias you're talking about? What previous bias you're talking about? Exactly. So I, I, I'm not sure if he can, uh, you know, yeah. unmute I mean, himself. You have to tell that. me what previous bias. Because uh, the media was biased against Nehru. Uh, we could say uh, it could be biased against Congress. <laughs> what was, where was the bias? I told you there, are, there were holy cows. There yeah. were, but we didn't, then you're operating. But what was the previous bias of the media to the present bias of the media? I'm sorry, I have to, you have to explain to, you have to give me examples. 
I guess then it might be a problem with his wording or something. So uh, uh, we can I move on to. It means something. Maybe what you see when I say this is a retaliation against the previous bias. Yeah. Okay. So what was the previous bias? You have to tell me, na. Right? This isn't my the previous. That was the previous bias. What was the previous bias? So uh, I I won't like to you know uh, uh, put words in his mouth or something, but yeah. I I would assume that he's talking uh, essentially about that anti-establishment uh, sort of a thing, right? So, no, but media has always been anti-establishment. Media, yeah, but you see, I that's what I told you. You know, even before the two thousand fourteen election, what was media? We were reporting mm. scams after scam. Yeah. Ministers were resigning. Ministers were going to jail. What is what is this guy name? Guy's name I keep forgetting. That CWG guy, who uh, Congress I keep forgetting his name. He resigned because of the CWG scams. So you want me to say suddenly India has become so you know there's no corruption? Yeah, it's sort of hard to believe. I think that you know and suddenly there's no yeah. corruption anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, uh, like so many things are not being reported, you know. So, in context of that, a follow up of that, um, you know, um, how do rational people, how do laymen know whom to trust as a journalist? Because you know, everybody showing showing that re- repeated things, and they're not showing. Hmm? Yes, sir. They're not showing anything against the government. <laughs> hey, that's a question I would ask myself. So, how do we figure out whom to trust as a rational as rational people? See, as I said, uh, I mean. Jokes apart, I was saying, see, journals, see, problem here in India. How many people read English? English, uh, uh, I mean, are into English journals? The majority is in Hindi journals. Okay, regional. Let me say not Hindi, regional. But in English, as I said, there are, you know, there are magazines, there are you know institutions, which are still more or less. they are really objective but they are hardly they are hardly they they you know it's, it's a lot of we read the because we journalists we know about these magazines we read them i mean a lot of people you won't even even heard the names of this magazine ordinary people i mean so it's not that journalism is dead i mean there are still you know a bit of life here and there so we are kicking some people are still kicking and trying to survive uh yes sir absolutely um sort of sort of an extension to uh, your point i think aditi dudeja asked us a question so she, she uh, the first part of her question is sir what is the role of the viewers or on how much uh, the or uh, or how much the audience is responsible for the kind kind of content media that we are receiving today right so this sort of a rage media that we talk about this has been a uh, sort of a, a positive feedback loop from what uh, the audiences want right so if if we talk about that bihar election thing again so the the uh, the, the coverage of the media was about sushant singh uh, sushant singh rajput but it I was mean, also something that but i'm saying it was a build up yeah yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> but it was something that the, uh, the the common man also wanted right so uh-huh. can we can we somewhat blame uh, not not even blame can we can we talk about how the uh, the audience themselves could be the reason why there is we, we see the sort of a change in what the media has become and the sort of uh, you know uh, the, uh, uh, the the stopping of you know real journalism in a sense you know the censorship of real journalism in a sense because that is we can say something that uh, the people do not actually want to uh, hear about they want to hear about actors or they want to hear about these things can we say that to a certain extent Uh, in a way, see again. I'm saying, who's uh, someone asked? That's a very interesting uh, question. Now that news has become entertainment or something like that. Someone, someone must have. Uh, uh, someone must have I that. believe so. Yes. Uh, yeah. I... So yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, absolutely. You don't see. You don't want to. Or maybe you know someone was telling me we were discussing. See the people who are economically backward. you have nothing to gain you're economically deprived you're suppressed you're oppressed so why do you flex your muscle mm. you flex your muscle when you say i'm hindu to kya hua main garib hu lekin main to hindu hu mere ko khana nahi milta to kya hua i'm hindu i'm better that's a that's where that's where the politics of it, this country has gone 
you know, like, of course, she's right. I mean, it is, it's a kind of, people want this kind of shit. I mean, sorry, want this kind of news. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is, many people, like, as you've also stated, uh, it is true that many people believe that journalistic freedom has been on the decline and censorship has been increasing manifold in India specifically. Is there anything that the common man can do according to you to better this situation? As yeah, we can all I mean, they all should get together and start a newspaper. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think okay. they can do. <laughs> That's a good, interesting question though, but unfortunately, I don't think common men... See, my pro thing is that, you know, they should, my only request to all of you, you should read as much as possible. Read, man. Read Golwalka's bunch of thoughts. Read his, uh, the critic of bunch of thoughts. Then you decide. Problem with, I would say a lot of journalists these days, they don't read. You have to, you know, read a variety of things. You have to read history. History is not whatever. History plays one uh, uh, history. There's a history which praises Srijad Dollar. There's a history which is criticizes Srijad Dollar. There's a history who uh, paints Aurangzeb Orange as a you know as a monster. There's another uh, per se uh, kind of history which says Aurangzeb was not actually as bad as he was being projected to be or been portrayed to be. So then you form your opinion. What do you think is right? You have to decide, but you have to read. You have to, you know, increase or expand your knowledge. Otherwise, you can't, you can't have, I mean, Ajkal, uh, they keep saying that WhatsApp education and all that. I mean, that's not, the, you have to read, man. Uh, absolutely, sir. I, I absolutely agree. Uh, actually, uh, we got a, a sort of a second part from Ayush Singh's uh, question. Uh, so he he, he asks, uh, sir, presuming when you say media, you're referring to uh, the whole, right? So, sir, even during the emergency, as you referred, the news giants like Indian Express, led by Ramnath Goenka and statesmen, stood their ground, right, against the mighty prime minister. So would it be fair on part of the news editors and journalists today putting onus and blame on the government altogether? And not on their own willingness to be able to, you know, impart uh, sort of impartial journalism. So if we say that there were uh, there, there were people, you know, holding their ground during the uh, time of the emergency, can we also, uh, you know, uh, ask the the journal the, the media houses today to hold their ground against the uh, uh, the establishment that has so often, you know, tried to suppress the media? Okay. Before I answer that question, I'll ask a counter question. Who was Goenka? He was what? He was the owner of Union Express. Hmm. Who was C.R. Irani? C.R. Irani was the owner of, the proprietor of statesman. So who stood up against the government? The proprietors, hmm. not the editors, not the journalists. The proprietor. What happened to Times of India, Hindu Sun Times, even so-called the mighty Hindu, just told the government line. The proprietors said, no, whatever government says is good. So we, that's what I say, you have to have proprietors like that. You have to have people who have the courage to take on the government, take on whosoever, it's not BJP or Congress or left or what, whosoever, who to, the ruling parties, who, you know, uh, anti, money, uh, which is the harmful policies of the ruling parties, whichever, uh, whoever, whosoever they are, you know, so anti-people policy of the, this thing. Absolutely. So the proprietors, see, that's what I'm saying. Whenever you say Indian Express and see who took the stand, Gwenka took the stand. Gwenka was a owner. Mira dukan hai maja It's like that. So when the owner took the stand, then the employees took the stand. Of course, I mean, credit goes to everybody in Indian, Indian Express and Statesman. But you think that 
see that's what i keep telling you why a humongous organization like the leading uh, newspaper in the country today they are not financially they are not they are not like small newspaper ki they they are scared of i mean they have human massive resources they have got revenues they can't take on the government but nahi lenge because i don't know why because you don't want to tell i mean today you know of course emergency was not uh, emergency was ended not because of the media but because of certain other things but today if the big media houses say this is right and this is wrong a government kaha jayega yaar media is a very powerful tool very powerful and i think it's the most potent and powerful tool which shapes the democracy you gag the media you gag the democracy absolutely sir absolutely so uh, we'll be moving on to the last question so uh, yeah. rava can you please ask yeah okay um so um freedom of speech has unfortunately become a contentious topic in india many people are being booked under the law for saying certain things does this foundation of freedom of speech affect your incentive to put forward stories that may be considered in, in that gray region of what comes under the freedom of speech and what doesn't exactly i mean i have to be very careful when i write a story i have to be very careful not to use particular angle because to my tomorrow i mean i was i spent some days with the naxalites i was in chatisgarh dandakar in i spent 15 days i was i sent you the article i was spent around 15 days with them in the jungle so my i wanted to study them why they are in the ideology why why they are you know giving up their lives for this particular you know mindless warfare so because i come from bengal i know a wee bit about naxalism so this girl she was leading us you know the said see naxalism naxalite may plg people's liberation guerrilla army 40% of are being controlled by the women and they are like armed um, and so we were in the jungles of walking 7 hours a day and thing like it was like exhausting so anyway i asked her i said she is a tribal gonta tribal so i said uh, i said have you heard of charu majumdar kanu samya she said no i said what she is a one of the leaders so i said why are you in this naxal this particular you know why are you next like why have you joined this particular thing i said uh, so he said imperialism ke khilaf imperialism ke hindi i think santra whatever i'm sorry so imperialism ke khilaf ladna hai manna hai so i said what do you mean by imperialism so she said you know look i come from a gold family they are tribes i mean i have i haven't seen poverty like this ever she said either i'll be i'll be you know i'll be killed raped by the contractors jungle contractors or i'll be i'll die of disease malnutrition disease and so the moment i join that slides i get food i get you know some respect and anyway i have to die so my problem here is that this mindless killings they are being brainwashed and what this only way i think this this brainwashing and naxalites can be countered is by development you know development in the remote areas are really really necessary and which is not there i mean five 15 days i was inside the jungles of chatisgarh i didn't see electricity it's like crazy so that is way it is actually uh absolutely sir and um i i think i i'm speaking for everyone here that this was an uh, an eye opening session for us right so for a lack of a better word i think this was this was sort of daunting you know it it portrays a sort of a transparent picture to what we have seen is opaque right it it opens up the the world of uh, media to us right this this uh, uh, this session that we have gone through and we absolutely thank you for it and i would actually now like to call upon uh, shobha devi ma'am to uh, give you a formal uh, you know no vote uh, of thanks 
for this you raid. Done, done it well. You have done it well. Thank you so much, sir, for the thought-provoking address, and uh, you have given deep insights from the field. And I'm sure I'm, uh, our students are going to, um, you know, remember those things because many of them aim to become journalists. Many of them, uh, you know, aspire to uh, join. Uh, print media and uh, broadcast media at some point of time, you know, in their later career. So uh, it, it was truly a memorable session and we are going to have you uh, again very soon, you know, whenever the college reopens, uh, maybe a Department of English event, you know, where you can uh, again share uh, some thoughts and some uh, reminiscences, you know, from the previous uh, experience, you know, during your stay in the college. Yeah, so yeah uh, sure. Yeah, that was. Um, thank you. I mean, thank I you for your valuable time. With, uh, I mean, I was in the college in the 80s. That ARSD and this year is a huge difference, you know. So we I were, was born uh, in 1981, sir. Yeah, so we were feared <laughs> by, you know, the moment we walk, walked into Venkateshwar, we, they were scared of us, you know, like, oh, ARSD. But Dr. Jha has done a, a tremendous job. I must congratulate him. And he's really taken the college to a different level and height altogether. And I thank you all, and I look forward to meet you all in person sometime. And thank we you. thank you, sir, for such an enriching session. And it was, you know, truly great to have such a candid conversation. You must not have realized <laughs> we, yeah. uh, uh, we took so much of time from you. Yeah. It was not an hour-long session. It was more than that. <laughs> thank you very much yes, for organizing. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I would now like to call upon the next set of moderators, Vanj and Chinmay. Uh, before that, actually, uh, we'll be taking a five-minute break uh, between the sessions. So uh, I would I would ask everyone here to please stay in the session, but you can take uh, you know five minutes to get your work. So when does, uh, I mean, when does it get over? Five, no? This will get over at five. Uh, at five. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll have to go somewhere, so I'll take your leave. Uh, thank you once so again much, for sir. giving me no problem, this opportunity. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Do we have to resume right now? Yeah, we have to resume right now. Mehek has right. joined in. Mehek is already here with us. All right. Yeah. In May, can we all, can you also write? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rabha and Harkirat, for that wonderful session with Mr. Sanjay. Uh, I'll be your host for the next one hour, and I have Chinmay with me. My name is